So now we get to kind of move full steam ahead with this research segment of the call and talk about two real life examples of research projects in the network that have both benefited from and will continue to benefit from parent and patient involvement. So I'm going to see quickly if we can hear Mike Kappelman. Mike, are you there? I am here. Wonderful. So I'm going to turn it over to you. If you could, as a part of your introduction, just tell us all how long you've been part of Improve Care Now, and you can dive right in. Great. So I'm Mike Kappelman. I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist at the University of uh, North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And I have been part of Improved Care now for 10 years now. Um, so it's been uh, really a, uh, an incredible uh, journey to see uh, the network evolve over, uh, over that time period. Um, and the combined study, which I have the privilege of uh, talking to you all about for the next 15 or 20 minutes, is really a perfect example of co-production. Um, and as a matter of fact, two plus years ago when a opportunity to apply for research funding to conduct pragmatic clinical trials crossed my email in basket, the very first person that I went to to brainstorm about this was David Wall. Um, and, you know, we initially sat down and I had sort of pitched a general um, topic and a general method. Um, and David said, I think the topic is a great one. Um, and I think the method is not going to be one that parents or clinicians are going to be receptive to. And he went out and, uh, you know, asked about a half a dozen parents and I went out and asked about a half a dozen clinicians and um, much to my dismay, David was right. Um, the, uh, the method that I had originally wanted to, uh, to use to answer this question um, was, was not all that uh, popular with either um, families or clinicians alike. And so we, uh, we pivoted and, and took a little bit more of a, a complex uh, route um, and, and wound up with our combined study, clinical outcomes of methotrexate binary treatment with infliximab or adalimumab in practice. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit about the uh, story behind Combine and, uh, and give you a, uh, an overview of where we're at today. Next slide. And so Combine is um, really a tremendous opportunity for us as an Improve Care Now network to not only change the practice of medicine in pediatric Crohn's disease by addressing um, one of the most pressing clinical questions, um, a question that, uh, you know, plagues both uh, clinicians and patients and families um, really every single day, um, but also to change the way that we conduct research in pediatric IBD in our Improved Care Now network and perhaps in a way that's applicable to other pediatric conditions um, because by conducting the combined trial we'll have the opportunity to demonstrate the potential of Improved Care Now um, in fulfilling this mission of being a prototype learning healthcare system in implementing um, our first randomized controlled trial and doing this as an outgrowth of everyday clinical care in all of our practices across the nation um, and doing so by extending and repurposing and expanding the organizational structure and data collection and other practices that, that already um, had been uh, taking place in our network and you know in many ways this combined study um, has been a logical and uh, you know almost inevitable next step in the growth and evolution of ICN. Next slide. And I'll start with the clinical question or, or questions that Combine is asking. Um, and I'll set the stage by stating that by and large, um, anti-TNF treatments are the most effective treatments for pediatric Crohn's disease. Um, yet, they don't work for every patient. 
Um, and even in patients for whom they work initially, they don't work forever. And there are a number of real safety concerns. And the question that we're answering with Combine is whether um, using a second immune suppressant medication in addition to the anti-TNF can improve the response rate and prolong the duration of response um, and do so with an acceptable level of additional side effects. Next slide. And so I think some of the uh, questions, and some of these are, are, are sort of a little bit uh, clinical, but I know this is a, a highly engaged and an educated uh, audience. Um, it, some of the questions we'll be answering are, does the addition of oral methotrexate to anti-TNF improve outcomes and reduce the production of um, antibodies against the anti-TNF um, in kids with Crohn's disease? What is the cost of adding um, on some additional methotrexate? And I don't mean the financial cost, but ultimately the um, cost in terms of um, additional side effects. Um, next question, is combination with methotrexate equally effective or necessary for the two different anti-TNFs that are FDA approved for children with Crohn's disease, infliximab and adalimumab. Um, you know, adalimumab itself is more of a humanized molecule. It's reported to be less immunogenic. In other words, the um, body's immune system um, may react um, less to adalimumab as infliximab. And so one of the questions that uh, we face is, um, is a second immune suppressant medication equally important for the two different anti-TNF treatments? We, we often sort of lump them together, um, but maybe we should be separating them a little bit more. Um, and finally, you know, these days many providers are fastidiously checking levels of the anti-TNF and adjusting the dose or changing the frequency of dosing based on levels, and that's called therapeutic drug monitoring, or um, TDM. And most of the earlier work looking at combination therapy in adult patients did so um, with a one-size-fits-all approach to anti-TNF treatment. Um, nowadays, and particularly in kids, we don't use a one-size-fits-all approach, and we often are aggressively using therapeutic drug monitoring to adjust the dose of anti-TNFs. And so is combination therapy um, still of incremental value? And these are um, some of the really important questions that we'll be answering through the combined study. Next slide. Um, and so what is COMBINE? COMBINE is a pragmatic clinical trial to compare the effectiveness and safety of anti-TNF monotherapy versus combination therapy with a low dose of oral methotrexate in children with Crohn's disease. And you can see on the left of this slide that eligible um, participants in the study are kids defined um, by this protocol as less than 21 years of age diagnosed with Crohn's disease according to the criteria that their clinician has used, starting off on one of the FDA-approved anti-TNFs, infliximab or adalimumab, um, and not having a contraindication to methotrexate, not having a um, medical condition that would make adding methotrexate to the anti-TNF regimen unsafe for some reason. Um, those patients uh, who meet the eligibility criteria will be randomized um, and half will receive low-dose methotrexate in addition to their anti-TNF, and the other half will receive placebo in addition to their anti-TNF. Again, all patients get the anti-TNF as prescribed by their treating clinicians. Half will get the anti-TNF plus low-dose methotrexate, and half will get the anti-TNF alone. Um, data will be collected for two years um, at everyday routine clinical visits. Um, no extra study visit. This is really meant to be a um, practical 
um, study nested in the routine clinical care that we as pediatric gastroenterologists provide to um, many of you, our patients and families. Um, it'll be a two-year study, so longer than most studies, longer than most trials in Crohn's disease, and we think that's really important because um, Crohn's disease is a long-term condition, and we don't want to make treatment decisions based on three months or six months of data. We want to make treatment decisions based on having as much data and as much time as possible. And we'll be, we'll be looking at outcomes including indu inducing or achieving remission and maintaining that remission. And we'll be looking at patient reported outcomes. We'll be looking at levels of the anti-TNF and antibodies against the anti-TNF. And we'll be looking at uh, outcomes related to safety. Next slide. I think we can skip over this one, Sarah. I already highlighted that on the one before. And this is a little bit of a geeky methods-oriented slide, but I think it's really important in sort of understanding the spirit of sort of how we, um, how we designed the combined study. And, you know, just like making treatment decisions is always a balancing act and you're balancing the um, intended or beneficial effects of a treatment versus the unintended or side effects of a treatment. Designing a study is also a balancing act. And most clinical trials are efficacy trials shown on the left of this slide. And efficacy trials are usually the trials that um, industry that drug companies will undertake in order to gain approval from the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, to bring a drug to market. Efficacy studies are focused on the drug itself and evaluating the biological activity of a drug or potentially um, another treatment or intervention. And because of that, all aspects of the study design are optimized to demonstrate maximum efficacy or the maximum impact of a treatment. And um, all aspects of the design of efficacy studies are, are often sort of meant to um, meant to to minimize the um, potential safety concerns. And so the, the, the typical question that efficacy studies are asking is, can the intervention work under ideal or perfect circumstances? Combine is really a study of effectiveness shown on the right side. It's a pragmatic trial, and it's not focused on evaluating the potential of a treatment, but it really is focused on um, the information that we, the clinicians or patients or parents, need in order to make the right treatment decision at the right time for a um, child with a condition like Crohn's disease. And so the study design is, is, is really sort of put together to optimize or evaluate the effectiveness when a decision is implemented in everyday clinical care. And, and the type of question that it answers is slightly different. Does the intervention benefit um, a particular group of patients under usual everyday circumstances? Next slide. And so COMBINE itself was designed in response to a um, exercise that Improved Care Now did several years ago to prioritize the um, sort of unmet research needs within pediatric inflammatory bowel disease and this sort of issue of stepping up or um, stepping down in combination therapy versus monotherapy was prioritized by our entire community as, as sort of the, uh, the number one hit. And so when we were given an opportunity to put together a pragmatic clinical trial, this was the, uh, the one that we sort of chased after. Um, I hope I have convinced you that COMBINE is going to use very rigorous methodology to provide a definitive answer that patients and parents and clinicians can trust moving forward. It'll be the largest clinical trial ever done in pediatric Crohn's disease, and I've already mentioned the, the first Improved Care Now clinical trial. And going back from you know the earliest stages when we were first putting the idea together, it was entirely co-produced 
by parents and patients and researchers and clinicians. Um, and many of us actually wear multiple hats, which is uh, also, uh, you know, I think a, a unique aspect of this and many other improved care net studies. Next slide. Um, a word about patient and parent co-production in combine. Um, we have a number of uh, parents who are members of our study team and really have provided uh, critical input into all aspects of the design and, ex and its execution. Um, and David Wall, who just spoke to you, is, uh, is really one of the, uh, the most critical um, components uh, here. Um, parents lead our combined engagement team which also uh, includes the PAC, um, so kids, teens, young adults living with IBD, and you'll hear more from the PAC later. Um, it really was parents that led the development of all of our communication and recruitment and study educational materials, um, including a uh, video which was recently produced, and uh, you'll see at the end of this segment of the virtual community conference. Um, at each participating site, um, we really are looking for parents and patient champions to work with their local teams and kind of help figure out what the, uh, what the special sauce and mechanics are um, to make Combine a success at each local participating center. Um, and we hope that after we have the first crop of patients enrolled in Combine, that uh, veteran families will be a resource to new families who are considering trial enrollment. Um, just like across Improved Care Now, um, we have uh, developed a mentorship model where parents who have been through a difficult decision um, are available to reach out to other um, sets of patients and parents who are about to make um, a similar decision. Next slide. Um, a little bit about progress. Uh, so we have uh, 39 Improved Care Now sites who um, are going to be participating in the improved in, in the combined study, and we may have room for a couple more sites. And so, if uh, any of you are at a site that is not yet signed on, um, let me know if you're interested. We have 20 sites that are now up and ready and actively recruiting. Um, we've recruited our first 36 participants. I think it's now up to 38. We've had a couple more this week, which is awesome. But we still need 290 more, excuse me, 390 more. That's a typo. Um, so, uh, so there's plenty of, of time, and we still have a lot of work ahead of us. Next slide. Um, here are the listing of uh, active sites on the left and sites that have been selected and are uh, sort of awaiting final contracts and paperwork to, uh, to get activated. Um, so again, we're, we're nearly halfway there and uh, I'd like to especially uh, shout out um, anyone on this call who is um, at one of our active sites or sites awaiting activation. Next slide. Um, and so please do uh, feel free to get involved with the combined study. Um, for the ICN centers, thanks to all of you who are participating. Um, and please continue to work your hardest to recruit as fast as possible so that we can answer this important question not in four or five years, but in two or three years. Um, and if you're a patient or parent, um, again, at each participating site, we need parent and patient champions who are going to help make this study a success. Please contact um, me or David Wall offline if you'd like to get more involved or put your name in the chat box and Sarah will uh, take your name down and we'll hunt you down later. Um, again, we, we're looking for families who might be a resource for future families considering enrollment. Um, and again, uh, contact me or David or, or put, it, put it in the chat box if you want to get more involved. Next slide. Um, and finally, uh, if you want to learn more about Combine, we have a um, study website, www.combinetrial.org. Um, on this study website, you can see a map of all of the currently active sites that are participating. You can read a lot more about the study itself, frequently asked questions, um, and you can uh, view our short video that uh, was produced by um, or 
for whom the production was led by David and several other of our parents. And so um, I will end um, this formal part of the talk with uh, allowing Sarah to play the video. Um, and then if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, I'll stay on to answer them. Thank you, Mike. So let's try this because the video is excellent. Give me just a second to open up the web browser. Um, while we're doing that, I just our next speaker, Lisa Opapari, I just need to give you a little shout out to enter your audio pin so that we'll be able to hear you. Um, so let's see if you all can hear this. I'm not sure the whole thing will play right now, but I'm going to give it a try. All right, what am I doing wrong? Here we go. I found out what was wrong with my belly. It was Crohn's. That was a tough time, but I remember feeling so relieved to finally have an answer. What's weird was, my doctor didn't have a firm answer on how to treat it. She explained that there was disagreement about exactly which medicine would get me better. Imagine there are two kids with Crohn's, she said, one in Denver and one in Des Moines. They have the exact same symptoms, but one kid will be prescribed two medications, while the other will be prescribed just one. Some doctors use what's called an anti-TNF antibody by itself, while others will add a second medicine called methotrexate. Both treatments work well, but they both can have complications. We just don't have enough information to know which is best. That did not go over well with my parents. They wanted answers, not best guesses. That was four years ago. My doctor made a decision based on the limited knowledge we had, and I'm doing much better now. But now, we may have a chance to finally find the answer. The combined research study is going to test and directly compare therapies for Crohn's and kids. With more than 400 kids joining from around the country, it's going to be the biggest study of pediatric Crohn's treatment ever. The truth is, Crohn's isn't going away anytime soon. We're still going to have to deal with a lot of the stuff that nobody else understands. The flare-ups that make us miss soccer games and school dances. Or having to go to the bathroom 27 times in one day. But even when I was hurting the most, I remember what a relief it was to finally have an answer. Now, we have the chance to help other kids get answers too. Because we are all in this together. Check out www.combinedtrial.org to learn more about the study, or ask your doctor for more information. All right, thank you for, um, I'm I hope you could all hear that okay from the presentation. So thank you so much, Mike. And when you all receive the slides from this webinar, you will receive the direct link to that video. You'll just be able to click on this and it will take you right there. And hopefully that will make it easy for you to share with others.